podcast is titled Grandma's Grab Bag Fridays, but I'm doing the book readings on Fridays, so this might just pop up any empty day. <laughs> so this one's going to be for on a Monday. Um, let me. See. I think I need to turn the. I think I need to turn this down. It's really loud. I played through this. It's only like 10 minutes long. It's just a short demo of the game to come. Oh, this might be okay. Alright. I had turned this down before, but it didn't seem to stay there. It was up here to 100 again. Alright, let's see what happens. The name of this game is Dagon. said somewhere when it's going to come out or not, but I put it on my wish list. You tell me what you think about it. I think I want to get it when it comes out and play it. Um, the reason is because it's something different. It. It. It doesn't seem like you're going to have to be fighting a bunch of zombies or mutilated people or it's nothing doesn't seem to be anything about the apocalypse I'm not sure and uh, uh, it's not horror like they make all of them walking down halls littered with trash jump scares none of that's horror to me but this is really different and unusual so let's get in it so you can see it I am writing this under an appreciable mental strain, since by tonight I shall be no more. Get my headset on. Ah. Uh. Look at this. In the demo, we don't get to this teeny tiny room that he's in. I hope there's a door over there on the left. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to read some of this stuff. But, uh, see those arrows there? All you do is click your left mouse button and center that on a circle like that and click the left Penniless, mouse button. Penniless, and at the end of my supply of the drug which alone makes life endurable, I can bear the torture no longer and shall cast myself from this garret window into the squalid street below. Now, what he says is a squalid street below looks like moving water to me. So, I don't know if, if the, I don't know if we're hearing rain outside that's flooding or if we're hearing that moving water. In the real game, I guess we'll find out. All right, what does it want me to do? Oh, down here the arrows? Do not think from my slavery to morphine that I am a weakling or That's a degenerate. That's a storm. <laughs> slavery to morphine. And you're not a weakling or a degenerate? Hey, guys. With what you're going to see, uh, he probably does need that just to cope. Because he winds up in a scary mess. When you have read these hastily scrawled pages, you may guess, though never fully realize, why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. I don't blame you at this point, and I'd much rather hear you read your pages than me to have to read them, so thank you. Alright, what's this? The inkwell. Now he's it was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific that the packet of which I was supercargo fell a victim to the German Sea Raider. And I'm going to be taking pictures. The Great War now was then at its very the beginning, and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation. took a picture of this already.
so that our vessel was made a legitimate prize, whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. Really? What is that? Oh! There. So liberal, indeed, was the discipline of our captors, that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone, in a small boat, with water and provisions for a good length of time. It would have been nice if you could have taken somebody with you. There's his provisions. Get him on board, man. When I finally found myself adrift and free, I had but little idea of my surroundings. Never a competent navigator, I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Of the longitude, I knew nothing and no island or coastline was in sight. Nothing but ocean as far as he can see. The weather kept fair, and for uncounted days I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun waiting either for some passing ship, or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. Man, I'd be hoping for that too. Look at the way that wa that light from the sun moves on that water. And look at the way the water moves. I think that's really, really cool. I think that's done really well. I've seen that look just like that. With the shadow of that lantern shining on that sack, moving up and down with the toss of the boat. Then the edge of the boat's shadow back and forth over that water pouch. This is, look at these shadows. This is really cool. Yeah, I think I want to get this game when it comes out. But neither ship nor land appeared, and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. The change happened whilst I slept. He probably wishes he'd, he'd never woke up, too. Its details I shall never know. Nope. He has no idea what happened while he slept. For my slumber, though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. None of what happened woke him up. Look at this. The ocean is gone. That looks like Cthulhu. <laughs> it's a giant squid. Look at all this sea life abandoned out there. There's his boat, his paddle, other paddle. I took a picture of this too. When at last I awoke, it was to discover myself half sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire, which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see. mucky mud of the ocean bottom and in which my boat lay grounded some distance away though one might well imagine that my first sensation would be of wonder at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery i was in reality more horrified than astonished 
I'd be all of that. Horrified, astonished, terrified, incredulous. For there was in the air and in the rotting soil a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. I wouldn't have thought of sinister. I would have thought of stinky, amazing, disturbing, frightening. The region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish and of other less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. I can't even imagine being there in this. There was nothing within hearing, Look and nothing in sight, save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. Oh, I'd be fearful too. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, it as though reflecting stars. the inky marsh beneath my feet. that thing I want to take a picture of. Right there. Oh, there's that again. Oh, it's, it's inspired by Lovecraftian, that's for sure. You can tell that. He's walking As I crawled into the stranded boat, mud. I realized that only one theory could explain my position. What theory? I can't even think of any theory. And guys, that grayness out there past the mud is not ocean. This is not sticking up out of that water. That's not water. It's more of this. Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. Portion of the ocean floor? He said it was as far as he could see. So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, straining my ears as I might. See, so that's not the ocean that this is sticking up out of over there. That's all this junk. I would be so terrified. Nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. Now see, to me, this is horror. This is terrifying. This is scary. Who, who could stand to be in this position? Most developers don't know what horror is and what scary is. This guy, whoever is this developer is, knows. For several hours I sat thinking or brooding in the boat, which lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. Now, that right there, I can't believe uh, that loses my immersion for me because if the bottom of the ocean floor was heaved up out of the water and all this deep mud and muck and everything that would be down there I, I, it would not dry uh, 
in such a short time. No, no way. So that's not workable for me. That night I slept but little, and the next day I made for myself a pack containing food and water, preparatory to an overland journey in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. Man, he's gonna have to walk through all this sucking mud to, to try to find land somewhere. He doesn't know how far this goes. On the third morning, I found the soil dry enough to walk upon with ease. No, no way. And when you said this, you should have shown that, but it's not still wet, soggy mud as it should be. The odor of the fish was maddening, but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil and set out boldly for an unknown goal. Listen to his feet in that muck. <gasps> what is it? Oh. <laughs> I forgot. I went like that at the end of it before. What is it? <laughs> but we don't get to know. Some sea monster still alive. Thank you for playing the demo. If you'd like to learn what eldritch horror drove our protagonist to the depths of madness, wishlist the game and await the full release. I already wishlisted. We'd also love to hear your feedback, so head to our Steam forums and drop us a line or two after wishlisting, as it will help us improve the final game. <laughs> like us on Facebook to stay up to date with all of our accursed <laughs> creations. Very good, very good. Saving is not yet available, but you should be able to complete it in around 10 minutes, which is true. Mine was a little longer than 10 minutes because you know I have to yak, yak, yak. <laughs> the game is at an early stage of development, so please report any problems you encounter on our Steam forms. We'd also love to hear your feedback, as it will help us improve the final game. We are also, oh, we are still working on the VR version, too. Oh, can you imagine this in VR? Thank you for your patience. Very nice. So, I would advise all of you to get this demo. Play this in a dark room at night before you go to bed. <laughs> That'll make it even creepier. All right, I'm going to exit out of this, and I'm going to put this in Grandma's grab bag. And I think I'm going to upload this for this coming Monday. Uh, the day I'm recording it is Friday, so... Today's the second. So this will be up on Monday the 5th. Alright grandkids, goodbye and I will see you next time. <laughs>